Now, there's actually another similar story in the Babylonian and earlier Sumerian, the whole Mesopotamian, Akkadian, all those stories uh, are related. They had one story where one of the gods, Enki, uh, is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the other one, it's E-A, Ya, or something, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, Enki is um, one of the gods in the Babylonian tradition that helped create humanity as a species on the planet. And his brother, Enlil, started getting really annoyed at the humans because they were making a lot of noise and complaining about their hard labor that the gods were making them do, <laughs> and which was what they were created for in the first place. Um, he was like, ah, they're, I can't sleep, they're screaming all the time, and <laughs> I'm just going to wipe them out. I'm just going to kill them. So uh, he plans all these series, he plans this series of, of devastating events, like a uh, famine. And so Enki comes in and he teaches people uh, how to grow grain and store it so that they actually can survive through famine. And uh, so his plan's thwarted. Enlil decides, well, I'm going to cause a flood. And so he teaches them how to build boats <laughs> and uh, save themselves from... Like, there's a few of them. And so basically all the main things that empowered the people uh, were taught to them by Enki in order to prevent their destruction by their, you know, a labor master, their slave master, uh, Enlil. So it's a very similar story as well, and Enki is considered by a lot of Luciferians as a light bringer, or a Luciferian archetype, or one of these light bringers group that you can find in all the different mythologies around the world and throughout history. And there's others as well, and some of them are not as uh, well known, but it's, it's, all, it's all over the place. So I kind of want to get into what Luciferianism is. Um, I know I got into a little bit before, but mostly in comparison to Satanism. So the first thing I'd like to say is that uh, Luciferianism has never been such a large, organized uh, religious or philosophical movement. Uh, there hasn't been a big enough Luciferian movement out there calling itself Luciferian to burn into the consciousness of collective consciousness what Luciferianism is. So really, each person who calls himself a Luciferian has to define it for themselves. Um, and I think that that's really important too because it's all about kind of standing out and being, going on your own and deciding, I'm not gonna just put my spiritual well-being or you know, even the decisions in my life be in someone else's hands, I'm going to decide for myself what that means to me. And uh, you have to decide for yourself that you're a Luciferian. You can't, there, I'm sure there are people out there that will give you an initiation that says, now you're a true Luciferian now that you've received this initiation, but that's bullshit. Anybody who wants to be, anybody who feels himself to be a Luciferian and wants to have that label applied to them can just say, I'm a Luciferian, and this is what it means to me, and, uh, and that's totally valid. Um, but of course, we can determine some general uh, trends that we see among people that do declare themselves to be Luciferian. Um, one of the things is often the study of comparative mythology, uh, ancient and modern. So. Like I said, uh, you find the light bearer archetype in all kinds of world mythologies. And so that's something that a lot of people find inspiration in. A lot of Luciferians find inspiration in studying different cultures and exploring the, the light bearer archetype that they find within the various characters. And sometimes it's not just one character, but maybe 
several characters exhibit this at one point in the story, or or there could be a, a consistent character that's a light bearer through the whole thing. Uh, but you know, study of comparative theology is something that most Luciferians do. Um, like I said, valuing personal responsibility is a big one. Um, you know, when the culture that we find ourselves in here in Canada, um, Lucifer represents like one of the ultimate rebels and standing out against, you know, apparently omnipotent force in order to stand up for what they believe is true, you know, and right. And, uh, and also, just to stand up for yourself, because Lucifer uh, just said, you know what, I don't need to follow your orders, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Um, so, personal responsibility, but that also means that you can't just say, oh, well, I was just following orders, you know. So, the freedom is a two-edged sword, where... You know, on the one hand, you get to do what you want without having to, you know, fear hell in the afterlife or whatever threat that's being uh, placed against you. Um, but you do have to take personal responsibility for your actions. Um, you have to save yourself or, you know, you can't just say, oh, well, I've given my life to Jesus, so I'm good, you know. <laughs> He's, he's got my back. <laughs> uh, no, you have to do it. You have to... Whatever you feel is the great work uh, or your purpose in life or just what you feel is right and, and true, uh, you are responsible for achieving that yourself and living up to your own ideal. Um... Oh yeah, so the other major thing about Luciferians in general that we can typically say is, is with most Luciferians is the idea of giving to the community. So giving back as well. Um, it's not just about yourself. You have to take care of yourself first, but uh, the idea is that you're supposed to try and share uh, with others. Not shove it down their throat, but uh, for example, you could do a piece of art that um, conveys something of what inspires you or something of the truth that you have kind of conceived for yourself uh, or insights that you feel that you've gained um, or even just interesting concepts that you think people should contemplate. They can be expressed through art, uh, through doing lectures like this, um, music. There's all kinds of different ways that people can express themselves. Um, but to be a Luciferian, that's kind of part of it. Uh, I would say for most, most people feel that that is part of it. And it's right in the name itself, light bringer. So what are you bringing? What light are you bringing? You know? Uh, it's not, the name doesn't mean light hoarder or light collector, it's light bringer, right? So uh, what sun are you calling up, you know, to shine on the world? And uh, another way to kind of explain what Luciferianism is is to, con to discuss the concept of right-hand path and left-hand path. Now, Luciferians generally tend to um, conform to the kind of a left-hand path kind of concept, but there are lots of Luciferians that are also right-hand path. 